One of the first things that a lot of people do whenever they install Arch Linux for the first time is install an AUR helper like Yay or Paru. And I did this too. These are basically magical programs that allow you to install anything in the world. So for example, anything I want to install, I can just run Yay-S or Paru-S to install. And of course, that's not only just for AUR packages. You can install anything that Pac-Man would install with these helpers. So anytime you want to install a package, you run Yay. Anytime you want to remove a package, you run Yay-R. And you just end up using Yay for everything. And don't get me wrong, these AUR helpers are great. I actually use Paru all the time. And I even have a video explaining which AUR helper you should be using. But it did come with a disclaimer. You shouldn't really use AUR helpers until you know how to manually build AUR packages from source. You might not even know what this is. Because most people, whenever they hear about the AUR, they just get recommended to use a helper like Yay or Paru. But in this video, I'm going to show you what these AUR helpers are actually doing under the hood and learn how to do things yourself. Because while these helpers work very well, sometimes they break. This has happened to me before. And you need to know how to install things by yourself. Sometimes you will need to go in and rebuild a package in order for it to work. And sometimes your AUR helper itself will break. And many times it's not difficult to fix this. All you have to do is go in and manually rebuild the package. But if you don't know how to do this, then you are going to run in a lot of trouble. And these AUR helpers, though they are great, they can abstract a lot of that away until you don't really know what you're doing. There's even a big warning on the Arch Wiki when you go to AUR helpers. AUR helpers are not supported by Arch Linux. You should become familiar with the manual build process in order to troubleshoot problems. That's basically what I'm going to walk you through today. Because when you use Arch Linux, you are kind of expected to know how to do things. I'm not trying to be elitist here, but it's a system designed to give you complete control and responsibility over your own system. So you should be aware of these things so you can fix them. And just so you don't get clowned on whenever your AUR helper breaks and you go to Reddit in order to ask what's wrong with it. And then people there make fun of you because you didn't know how to do something like this. Another issue with AUR helpers is that sometimes they make it easy to skip over reading the package build. Because when you're downloading something from the AUR, you're basically downloading a random script that somebody wrote online. I have another video on this if you want to check that out. But basically since these are user generated packages and they're running basically random scripts on your computer, it is a good idea to read over the installation script and just make sure that it's not doing anything suspicious. And that's another issue that you may run into if you've only been using these AUR helpers and never done it yourself. And of course, there's nothing wrong with using an AUR helper. But there are cases when you might just want to do it yourself. It can even be simpler sometimes, especially if you don't use that many AUR packages. But let's just get into it. So first things first, let's actually see what these AUR helpers are doing behind the scenes. So whenever you install something with this, what exactly is it doing? Well, all that it's really doing is cloning a Git repository and then running a script from there. So let's see what I'm talking about. And we can go into the AUR and see the web interface at aur.archlinux.org. It's going to be archlinux.org and just this AUR section right here. And we can search through things. So let's say that we're trying to find some package called pfetch. And we can see a list of all of the matching packages right here. And let's say that we want to download this one. And as you can see right here, there is just a git clone URL right here. And that's what we actually want to do. That's what these AUR helpers are doing behind the scenes. And so all we need to do to do it ourselves is just to clone this. Let's click it to copy this. And let's do something like go into my repos folder and git clone this right here. Now we just need to cd into pfetch. And let's see what is in this folder right here. So it is just this script called package build and let's open it up to see what this is doing. So I already made a video about how to read through these package builds and see exactly what they're doing. But just a cursory glance, we can see that it's just declaring some variables. And what it's going to do is it's going to get the package from this source variable. And it's just downloading this tar.gz file, which is an archive like a zip file. And it's downloading it from this URL, basically the GitHub of this project. So that all seems pretty straightforward. And then it's just installing this. And so this all looks good. We can go ahead and exit out of this. 
And in this case, we only have a package build file, but there might also be other things in here, like other install files that you should also read through just to make sure that they're not doing anything. And there is one dependency that you need to bring in. So you need to have base dash devel installed. So you would install this with Pac-Man and this will probably already be installed, but you might just want to double check to make sure that this is installed. And once this is, then we can run make package from inside this repository. And this will basically run the package build script. And as you can see, it is downloading the tardat gz file. And then after it goes through that, we can just ls and see that it has downloaded the latest version. And we want to install the latest version, which is going to be this one right here. And so we can actually install this with pacman now. So we can run, say, sudo pacman u and then pass in the file name right here. And we can hit enter and it's going to prompt us to install it with pacman. We can hit yes and it is now installed as you would expect. So we can run pfetch and it is now installed on our system. That was pretty easy. And now it is installed with pacman. So you can even just remove this with pacman as well. Something like rs pfetch will remove it for you. Just hit enter and it is now deleted. And we can even make that a little bit easier and do all of that in one command. So let's install it again with make package, but this time let's pass in a couple of flags si. So the s flag will get all of the dependencies from Pac-Man because this one doesn't have any dependencies right here, but some of these will have some other packages as dependencies, like the Rust version, of course, is going to depend on Rust. And so if you run dash s, Pac-Man will automatically get all of these for you. There may be some additional dependencies in here from the AUR that you will have to install manually. So you may want to take a look at this before you install. But that's what this dash S is doing. And then the I will automatically install with Pac-Man. So we just run this and Pac-Man is prompting us to install it. All we have to do is hit yes. And that's it. We have installed our first AUR package manually. Very simple. But at this point, you might be wondering if it's this easy, why would anybody want to use an AUR helper? When you can just do it yourself, it seems pretty simple. And that's because there is one downside of doing it this way. So you can install it and remove it with Pac-Man, but you cannot update it with Pac-Man. And that is the issue. So if this were to get an update and we wanted to pull that down, we would have to run git pull. And then this will get the latest changes if there are any. In this case, there aren't. But you would have to manually come in here, pull down the changes, and then update it again with make package dash si. And so you can see how that would be a little bit inconvenient. You have to manually do this, but there is a way to kind of get notified if there are updates available. And you can do that here on the AUR web interface. On the sidebar here, there is an enable notifications button. And if you click this and you have an AUR account, then it will send you notifications whenever a new version of this is available. And I actually think that this is a pretty good way to do things as long as you just have a few AUR packages. If you have like, I don't know, five or 10 AUR packages and you don't really install too many, you're not always testing out new software, then this is a pretty good way to do it. Especially if you're a minimalist and you don't want to bloat on your system, then manually doing this might not be a big deal. But for those of you that have a whole lot of different packages, like for me, I have like 20 or 30 AUR packages on my system right now. It's probably not practical to do this completely by yourself. And that's why AUR helpers were invented. Obviously, there's nothing wrong with using them. But in the past, my Paru has broken and I had to come in here. And if you're using an AUR helper, then the cache is probably going to be in a folder like this dot cache. And then in my case, it's going to be Paru might be yay for you, but it's going to be in here, clone, and then I can go down here to whichever package I want to go to. Maybe my yay installation broke and I need to go in here to yay. And this is something I had to do before. I had to go in and manually edit the package build because something broke and I had to go to the AUR and read the comments and basically see what was going on. A lot of times you'll be able to fix things just by reading the AUR comments. And all that I really had to do was come in here and change a variable here and then just rebuild the package from scratch and that was enough to fix the problem and so that's something you might have to do sometimes and some elitists will tell you that you shouldn't be using an AUR helper like yay or paru just because they abstract too much of this away but I think if you know how to do things yourself 
then there's not really an issue with using one of these AUR helpers. It does make things much more convenient for you. Just understand what they're actually doing. But you may want to have complete control over your system and do everything yourself. And in that case, manually building your packages is fine. Or what you can even do is you can even come to kind of a middle ground between having a AUR helper just automate everything away and manually doing everything yourself. You can use one of these scripts on the AUR helpers page. A lot of these scripts will basically just help you. Like maybe they will automatically pull down updates for you or search the AUR without having to go to the web interface. I know one very popular one is AUR Utils, which many people use. It's kind of a middle ground between the two different methods of doing it. So that may be something that you want to check out if that seems interesting to you. But I just wanted to make this little public service announcement just so you know the basics before you move on to something else. And one of my favorite things about Arch Linux is that you can do everything yourself. You do have the option of doing that. And so now that you know what to do, you can do whatever you want. Install them with an AUR helper, install them without. It's fine for me either way. And so now hopefully you know what to do and you're not going to get clowned on on the Arch Linux forums whenever you post some stupid question. Because you might have heard there's no such thing as a stupid question, but on the Arch Linux forums that is definitely not the case. So stay safe out there.